Hey YouTube, so I have had quite a few questions about printing and my process um, with Lightroom and Photoshop. The last couple videos I did were on Lightroom, so I'm going to do a quick run through of how I print with Photoshop and then the next video I do will we'll go more into details with Lightroom. So this is going to talk about um, how you size your images and how you create paper sizes, select your profiles, um, do what you need to do to get your colors right. Um, all right, so let's dive right in. All right, so here we are in Photoshop with an image. Um, the first thing I always do is I set my crop and my image size. So this one is already in two by three format. For the sake of keeping it simple, we will pretend we are going to use the Canon Pro 100 because that's a really common printer. Um, I don't generally print with that, but we'll just use that to keep it simple. So that prints to 13 by 19 inch paper. So let's say that we want to do a 12 by 18 print with a half inch border. I like to leave a small border so I can handle the photograph without getting risking getting fingerprints on the actual image. Um, okay, so you push Option Command I and this opens up our image size screen. First thing we're going to do is adjust our size, but to start I want you to uncheck Resample. Resample is when you're actually adding pixels to enlarge the photograph. So let's click uh, 18 for the width, and that gives us just over 12, which is fine. You'll get an error when you're printing that says you're going to exceed your margins, but it's by such a small amount, it, it doesn't matter. So you'll notice when I did that, that that changed us to 398.111 pixels per inch. DPI is dots per inch, that's a printer. PPI is pixels per inch. So th this is how many pixels my image has. If I change the size, it's going to change how many pixels are within that specified size. So if I go lower with this, that number will go even higher. Um, but it's important in Photoshop, you don't have to do this in Lightroom, but in Photoshop you have to get your image size accurate to print. Um, okay, so I like to print in 300 ppi. If this number was more towards 600, I can print in 600. Some people might tell me that this isn't correct, this is just the way I do it and it works great. Um, if I have a ton of extra pixels, a really high resolution image or I'm printing it really small, you can step it up to 600 pixels per inch. But I'm using Canon printers and from all the information I've gathered, they like 300 and 600 PPI. So I wanna change this to 300. So I am going to click resample, 300. So you can change your style in here. You can do automatic, you can do enlargements, reductions. We'll just set it on automatic right here since we're, we're shrinking it down. That's just kind of the easiest. You're probably not gonna notice much of a difference in these settings unless you are printing pretty large. Uh, if you're enlarging, you might wanna do something different, but generally I actually use On One's program to enlarge. Photoshop just enlarges it in one step and it's supposed to work much better if you enlarge in small increments and on one automatically does that for you. But that's a different program, different video. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just change this to 12 to prevent those errors from coming. Um, it's not gonna change the image enough that you'll actually notice any difference. All right, so now I have my print 18 by 12, 300 PPI, click OK. It is gonna shrink it down a little bit. You'll see by the rulers that it is 18 by 12. So now to print, I'm gonna click, click Command P. Oh, and so one other thing, if it if it seems like your image might be really dark, you don't want it to print too dark, <clears throat> I'll recommend using a level, levels layer. And you can bring up the mids just a little bit. Um, I've printed this image before and I don't, think it needs it, so I'm going to go ahead and just leave that off. Okay, so to print, we're going to hit Command P. All right, so this is your print settings. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to change this to a Canon Pro 100. This is connected via the IJ Canon setup protocol. There's another video about this if you need more information. Um, the color handling. Photoshop manages colors. 
the printer profile. So you're gonna find the paper that you're using. So when I use my Pro 100, I use Red River paper. So I have the profile for the um, Red River Ultra Pro Satin 4.0 Canon Pro 100. That is the, the profile that I downloaded from my paper manufacturer's website and installed on my printer. So I always leave black point compensation on. That makes it so if there's areas that it seems like are just going to be solid black, it tries to boost those or brighten those areas up a little bit. Now it generally will brighten your entire image. So there is ways if you want to get more advanced to go in and just selectively brighten those areas when printing. Um, but we're not going to get into that right now. So. When I'm printing photographs, I use perceptual. When I'm printing paint, printing paintings or artwork, I generally use relative color metric. Um, they just it, they look more accurate to me that way. All right, so now you click print settings. Okay, make sure you have your proper printer selected. First thing we are going to do is actually set our paper type. Um, so quality and media. This is the media type that is recommended by. Um, Red River paper with this paper. Um, for my large format printers, I have actually custom media profiles in here that I got from them, but that is not possible to do with the Pro 100. So rear tray, print quality high. Um, there's your media. So just make sure this is set to match whatever your paper manufacturer specifies. Um, all right, so Next, the only other thing we really have to look at is layout. We will we'll peek at the others too. But um, so layout, this is where you do your paper, um, and this is where a lot of people kind of get mixed up. The most important part of this is knowing the direction that your paper is going to print. So when I'm printing on a roll, if my roll is ten inches wide, or let's say I had a, a eighteen inch wide roll of paper. And I'm printing this 12 by 18 photo and I want it 18 inches wide. You have to enter the 18 first, 18 by whatever your height. So in this case, we're going to use a Pro 100. The 13 by 19 is going to go into the printer vertically. So it's going to be 13 inches wide. So I'm going to print my image sideways. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go and just create a new custom paper size for exactly what we want to do. I probably already have it in here, but it doesn't matter. I want to, I want to show you. So click the plus sign after you go to manage custom sizes, double click and change it. So this is going to be, remember 12 inches is your first number because your paper's going in the direction 13 inches wide. So 12 by 18. And what I like to do is since I know I'm going to have a half inch border around it, um, I go ahead and just put that in parentheses here so I know when I'm using this paper size again. Half inch border outside. So now you know that your actual sheet of paper is 13 by 19. So width 13, make sure you do that width first by 19. And that means we're going to have a half inch margin or border all the way around. So 0.5 inch, 0.5 inch, and then click OK. And that's it. Um, so that's our paper size. Now layout color matching. You need to make sure that color sync is selected here. It should be grayed out, but if you selected Photoshop manages colors, this should be set to color sync. Um, the paper handling, none of this, none of this stuff really matters um, unless you're doing borderless, which we are not right here. If you are doing borderless, um, this fader adjusts how much bleed you have that goes over the edges of the paper, but we're not doing borderless, so. Um, and how do I turn that off? Okay, well, yeah, we're, it knows we're not doing borderless because of the paper size that we have selected. So then I'm gonna click Save. Ah. So I did just get an error that my paper could not go through the rear tray with this size. So I'm not really sure why, but you know, there's two slots on the Pro 100. So I just went in and changed it to manual feed. Um, and now we should be able to get out of here.
All right, so now this is your 13 by 19 paper. Obviously your picture is sideways. So you're just gonna go right here. You're gonna click that button. Now, just because it kept your picture facing the right direction for your viewing it, and it turned the paper sideways, it's still gonna print the right direction. You just have to, you just have to trust it. Even though it says 19 by 13, because our paper size that we selected was 13 by 19, not 19 by 13, the printer is going to know to print it out the 13 inch wide direction. Um, so just go over your other settings again, Photoshop, manages colors, there's our correct profile, perceptual, black point compensation is on. Keep in mind that when you do this, whenever you go back next time you want to print the same size of 12 by 18 on your 13 by 19 paper, when you click print settings, you're already going to have this preset here. So you're not going to have to recreate the paper size. Um, so from here on, you just click print and it's done. Pretty straightforward on Photoshop. The next video will go into Lightroom where you can get into the page setup and it, you can do several images on, on one piece of paper. Um, Photoshop does not work well for putting several images on one piece of paper with the Pro 100. With different printers, um, it, it works great, but with the Pro 100, you just don't have the, the options that you do with other printers. So yeah, there you go. I hope this was helpful. If it was, uh, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time. Thanks.